Poliovirus is the causative agent of poliomyelitis. It lives in an infected person's throat and intestines. Poliomyelitis occurs when the virus invades the nervous system and attacks nerves that activate muscle movement. In many cases, infections with the poliovirus cause no signs or symptoms at all. Symptoms include fever, headache, and muscle pains, followed by localized muscle paralysis. It depends on which nerves are attacked, which muscles are paralyzed. The outcome varies from mild weakness of part of an arm or leg to death if nerves in the brain stem that control muscles required for breathing and swallowing are paralyzed. When a limb was paralyzed in childhood, the muscle wasted away and the limb did not continue to develop at the same rate as that on the unaffected side, leading to a shriveled arm or leg. There are three types of polio, subclinical, non-paralytic, and paralytic. Approximately 95% of all cases are subclinical. These patients may not experience any symptoms. This form of polio does not affect the central nervous system. Symptoms, if any, last for 72 hours or less. Symptoms include sore, red throat, slight fever, vomiting, and general discomfort. Non-paralytic polio also does not affect the central nervous system and produces only mild symptoms. Symptoms may last for a couple of days to a week or two. Symptoms include fever, sore throat, headache, fatigue, abnormal reflexes, problems swallowing or breathing, and muscle tenderness and spasms. Paralytic polio is the rarest and most severe form of polio, which produces full or partial paralysis in the patient. There are three types of paralytic polio, spinal, affecting the spine, bulbar, affecting the brainstem, and bulbo bulbospinal, affecting both the spine and the brainstem. Symptoms usually start the same as non-paralytic. Soon after, the following symptoms appear. Loss of reflexes, severe spasms and muscle pain, loose and floppy limbs, sometimes just one side of the body, sudden paralysis, deformed limbs, especially of the hips, ankles, and feet, due to prolonged weakness. Polio is very contagious. It is most commonly spread by contact with the stool of someone infected. Other modes of transmission include contact with the sneezes, coughs, food, or water of someone infected. Children living under conditions of poor hygiene, people with poor immune systems, people with HIV, pregnant women, and the elder are the most at risk for getting the illness. Now we are going to discuss treatments, both unsuccessful and successful. In 1916, which was the first epidemic in the United States, Attempts at controlling the disease largely involved the use of isolation and quarantine, both of which were unsuccessful. In 1928, Philip Drinker and Louis Shaw developed the iron lung, a large metal tank equipped with a pump that assists respiration. The iron lung goes into commercial production in 1931. In 1940, Sister Elizabeth Kenny travels from her native Australia to California, where she is ignored. She then travels to Minnesota, where she gives her first presentation in the United States to members of the Mayo Clinic staff regarding her procedures for treating polio patients by means of hot packing and stretching affected limbs. This becomes the standard treatment for polio patients in the United States. In 1952, there are 58,000 cases of polio in the United States. Jonas Salk uses a newly developed tissue culture method of cultivation and working with the polio virus to create a vaccine. Early versions of a vaccine are successful. In 1954, massive field trials are sponsored by the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. In 1955, news of the successful vaccine trials is announced. A nationwide vaccination program is quickly started. In 1957, after a mass immunization campaign, there are only 5,600 cases of polio left in the United States. In 1958, a man named Albert Sabin develops an oral polio vaccine. Field trials prove that Sabin, Sabin's oral vaccine, which uses live weakened virus, to be effective. In 1962, the Salk vaccine is replaced by the Sabin oral vaccine, which is not only superior in terms of ease of in administration, but it also provides longer-lasting immunization. In 1964, only 120 cases of polio are reported nationally. The prognosis for mild and moderate polio is very good. Most patients recover completely within a short period of time. Of those who have paralytic polio, about half will recover completely, a quarter of those will experience some disability, 
and the last quarter will have permanent and serious disability. Less than 1% of polio cases result in death. In recent years, a new medical problem known as post-polio syndrome has been diagnosed. The condition shows up 15 to 40 years after the acute phase. Post-polio syndrome affects about 25% of all polio patients. The major symptom of post-polio syndrome is very slow decrease in muscle strength. The effects on society were huge. People were afraid of social contact, infected people were quarantined, and placards were placed on households with infected people. There was a lot of money that went into the treatments for polio. Just a few examples include funding for new facilities, funding for the construction of iron lungs, payment for the extra staff needed, and funding for researching and developing vaccines. The economy took a hit during these e epidemics in the United States. It is your choice to get vaccinated and deciding not to do so could be potentially dangerous to the rest of society. During the first outbreak in the United States, people were quarantined and put into isolation. This meant more facilities to hold patients and more nursing staff to care for the patients. Doctors were competing to develop the first successful vaccine and in the process may have even spread the illness in, through trials. The development of the first successful polio vaccine promoted a new technique in the medical world. This new technique used a killed version of the virus. Later, the oral vaccine was created with a technique that used a weakened version of the virus rather than a killed version. Using a weakened version of the virus prolongs the effect of the vaccine. Interesting facts! Tiny Tim in Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol, was probably a victim of polio. Franklin D. Roosevelt was the first and only U.S. president to have been in a wheelchair. He had polio. The cost of the polio vaccination is 0.11 cents in the United States. Polio cases have decreased by over 99% since 1988, from an estimated 350,000 cases then to 223 reported cases in 2012. The reduction is the result of the global effort to eradicate the disease. There is no cure for polio. It can only be prevented. The polio vaccine can protect a child for life. Get vaccinated. <laughs>